With our vast internet and collection of stuff out there in our incredible world, it can be a bit overwhelming finding useful resources out there on your own, especially for artists. But don't worry, I'm here to save you some time. With quite some experience and extensive research and practice, in this episode, I've jam-packed and gathered a bunch of different resources in different categories, things that I personally feel are super useful and can help you a creative wherever you are in your art journey. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a full-time artist. I've studied in art school, finished my illustration and fine arts degree with over 10 years of experience working with people of all ages in various mediums. But I'm also just an artist and student of life just like you are, learning more and more as the days go by. Which is why I enjoy spreading my knowledge here on YouTube so that you know you're not alone. So grab a notebook and your favorite writing utensil and let's dive in. First things first, when I refer to resources, what exactly am I referring to? Resources are all the materials available in our environment which are technologically accessible, which can also provide help for us. And who doesn't love that, right? In this case, I'll be focusing on resources geared towards creatives. Resources can be anything from people to places to websites, podcasts, and the list goes on. Of course, each tool can be used differently, so you can mix and match these, which is why I've broken these down into different categories. Everything from references to art classes, manufacturers, websites, art contests, and more. I'm personally a big believer in taking your own references. You guys know I love to paint from life. However, when you want to take on a bit more intricate topic, sometimes we need references. Let's say you want to refer to a model dressed in a fairy costume. To help us create this piece that comes from our incredible imagination, we're going to want to gather some references. Here are some of my recommendations. I highly recommend looking at some royalty-free websites, which I talk a lot about on this channel. Royalty-free websites include images that are free for personal and commercial use. Websites like Pixabay.com, Pexels.com, Unsplash.com, these are all great royalty-free websites for you to use. Now, over time that you're referring to these websites, they can be a bit limiting since they don't update the photos as time goes on. So if these get limiting for you, you can always refer to Gumroad, which has a bunch of different reference packs. I've purchased a few to practice different sketches and Gumroad is a great resource for artists, not just for references, but also art classes, digital brush packs if you're a digital artist. And there are plenty other things you can find there useful for creatives. With that said, taking your own references will always be my best pro tip because we pretty much have a resource right in our pocket at all times. Our cell phone can take great pictures, perfect enough to gather your own references. And one of the greatest benefits from taking your own references is that you'll never run into copyright issues and it's all yours. And plus you can repurpose for other projects after. For example, when I did my 100 hands challenge, which you guys may remember, I took my own references of my own hand. You can use a simple lamp and just place it on your subject. And that actually taught me so much about lighting. I just used a blank white wall and took all the references that I needed. And on top of that, learn sign language because that's what I included in my series. So from that process alone, I learned so much. And when you take your own references, it's all authentically you. Some other resources that I find really great for references, there is a museum app on the phone. In this app, people pretty much submit their own photos of themselves and then everyone just shares their drawings, which is pretty cool. Also, if you're practicing drawing, you can go to magicposer.com and this allows you to switch the character's position around in all different angles, which is super cool. This can be great if you're doing some figure drawings, maybe you're just using a pose for an illustration or you're doing a more finished painting. This is a great little tool to just pose the figure out. I love that you can rotate and see a bird's eye view or a worm's eye view from above or below. You can turn a 360 around figure and just play around with it. This can be really helpful if you have some figures in your finished pieces or if you're just simply wanting to practice the sketch. Speaking of a topic I am super passionate about, practicing your sketches, your drawings, getting a great creative routine and practice down, I find to be super crucial. Here are some resources that can help you get into a little bit of a groove with your creative process. I've attended many figure drawing sessions in person where you sit and draw a model from life, but in case you're unable to go to a physical class, you can literally set this up right in the comfort of your home on your computer with these websites. You may have heard of Sketch Daily where you can select all these different types of categories. You can quickly customize some of the selections and then get right to sketching. Perfect for practicing in your sketchbook. Another similar option is lineofaction.com 
They also have different categories, everything from animals to facial expressions, scenes or shape practice. You can select timer built in right into the program and you'll see it on the top right of the screen. Both of these are similar to one another, but it just depends which one you like more. Super great if you want to just take 20 to 30 minutes every day just practicing. These are great. Another great resource is quickposes.com. What I like about this website is that they have different examples, different prompts. You can see little demonstrations of figurative drawing. I love the little challenges up at top. And once you select something, I think the biggest plus is that you can flip the images vertically or horizontally to see their structure as well. Maybe you want to focus on a specific body part. You can just select that right on the website, press start and get to drawing. I think one of the greatest ways to loosen up is do gesture drawing where you get a super quick loose sketch in, gets the energy flowing in your drawing. I've done a video on this as well. There's also a cool website called figurosity.com. You can select different models, different poses, still poses or action poses and give yourself a little practice drawing session. If you're someone who really likes character design or animation, characterdesignreferences.com can be a great resource for you. They have a visual library, they have interviews, they show artworks and artists of the week, they have different challenges and this can overall be a great resource if you just want examples to see other people and what they do in the industry. Just exposing yourself to different kind of works can really gather your taste and style. Now, if you're practicing figure drawing, a little pro tip is to set up your monitor right in front of you so you're glancing up and down at the reference as if you're in a real life class. The master artists and painters of history hired models to sit right in front of them and paint for hours. They would break it down into three or six hour sessions and the model would take breaks. So if that's a resource that you're open to, think about reaching out to a model that you'd want to hire to draw from life from as well. Some of the greatest resources are your friends. And remember, if you need a reference for a finished piece, you can always order some costumes and dress up and take your own references as well. I remember we had a class in art school designated just to learn how to take references so we know how to light the subject properly. That was really cool and that's why I still recommend it today because why not have some fun while you're at it, right? Now speaking of art school and classes, there are a ton of resources on it but here are some things that I can recommend. I personally went to art school for a majority of my life. I had a great experience there. However, not everyone learns the same. But I do recommend checking out workshops and art classes, art schools in your area, in case you really like the in-person learning experience. I learned so much from being around the environment and surrounding myself with the people that are like-minded artists like I was. Most schools do have an application process and also a portfolio process. So you're gonna need to gather some of your works, prepare for that, see what they require. You can research workshops, maybe workshops abroad in a different country if you wanna travel. Also, nowadays there are plenty of websites that you can learn from just as great as in person. So feel free to check out some of these websites and see the different classes they offer. They're great resources and available to you right from your computer or your mobile device. All depends on your intention. Find an artist you love because there is a chance they do have a Patreon or another platform which you can sign up for little amounts just to get some live classes in. I love the real-time feel so I've been offering real-time demos and live sessions on Zoom with my patrons. We have been having so much fun on there. I've created just a warm, safe space for everyone to interact, critique each other's artwork. So take some time to find your little community. I personally recommend gathering some classes that kind of get you curious, putting them in a spreadsheet or a Word document so that you have them planned out for the week. So don't forget to schedule in those fundamentals. Organization, something that I also find extremely crucial and useful, especially as an artist. I think one of the greatest ways to have everything visually displayed is with Meal & Note, who are also the kind sponsors of today's video. Meal and Oat has been my go-to because it allows me to have everything in one board, all in one place, visually displayed so it's super clear. Perfect for any creative project. You can lay out new boards, you can annotate. I love breaking down into steps, having a little checklist, and it's just great to see the sketch versus the final right in one place. I love that you can customize their colors and icons. It worked excellently for my alphabet series where I had all the boards for all the letters. You can definitely imagine how much planning went into that. If you recall the starting a new sketchbook video, I actually laid out the whole project and process. Here's an example for you guys to see. 
they have a feature where you can add images you can actually annotate right inside of the program i love to draw right in milanot so i could see the flow of my sketch annotate different colors and just make sure i have things that i'm going to include in my finished project and illustration they also have a bunch of templates for any creative project whether you're looking to create a mood board or simply just swatch out some different color options. You can also take the page that you created and let's say you're collaborating with another artist, you can just share the link with them and it's super great if you have a little team of people working on a project. So Milanote is available for free with no time limit to sign up. Check out the link in the description and definitely try out Milanote for your next creative project. Once I have everything planned out, I also like, and this is gonna sound silly, a really great resource is just a notebook. Having everything transferred over onto a schedule can be really great. Maybe you're someone who likes to physically write down things. I have a physical calendar that I refer to every morning to make sure I'm staying on track and mostly just working in between the two and mixing and matching. As artists, we do have so many ideas going through our head all the time. Coming up with things and getting them down on paper is the fastest way to bring them into fruition. A simple, great resource is your notepad right on your mobile device. A lot of artists that I interviewed in my creative habits video, they actually said they just have a brain dump list. You just go right on the phone and just go at it with all their ideas. Also, trust me when I say this when post-it notes and sticky notes go a long way. I really recommend just keeping it simple and having it all in one place. I know the creative process can get pretty messy, but as artists, I still find that some sort of organization and workflow is super crucial when it comes to functionality and when it comes to just getting things done. The way you structure your environment and what is in your environment is your greatest resource. Don't forget to use those art supplies you put away and those books that you purchased and refer back to your old artwork, your old sketchbooks, because there are great resources as well. I have a video on my favorite art supplies and also some art supplies organization. So if you're interested, you can check that out too. I did find some really fun ways to do art history and just get curious about it. There can be so much inspiration found in the stories. I can admit I did find it a bit boring at times, but I promise that Google Arts and Culture makes this so fun and exciting to learn about. Check this out. There's so many features in the website. You can actually be brought right into a museum. Everything is amazing. The interactive features, you can actually zoom in and learn about an artist. One of my personal favorites is the art camera where you can zoom in and see the juicy brushstrokes. When you get right on the website, there's something called Today's Fun where you can do a little coloring book and you can jump right into the museum in the comfort of your home. So if you want to explore the hallways of the Metropolitan Museum, you can just go right on the website and soak it all in. I absolutely love this resource and think it's super underrated. One of my favorite paintings that I luckily got to see in person in Florence is beautifully available for you to zoom in right on the website and there's an infinite amount of elements to take in with this piece. Of course, it's not the same as seeing it in person. However, still a great resource to utilize as a creative. Another resource is this YouTube channel called the National Gallery. I also absolutely love Great Art Explained on YouTube here as well. The way things are broken down are simplified, it makes it fun, exciting, and I think it can be really great if you're trying to learn more and more about art history. Another great one is also Art History School. Sometimes instead of scrolling on my phone, I'll just go on these channels and learn more and have that just sit in the back of my mind because eventually it inspires my artwork or some pieces in my sketchbook as well. Sometimes it's best to hold the physical book and see and flip through it. So I keep the books on my shelf so I can refer to them daily. So ask yourself, what artists are you curious about? Research your local exhibitions because they just might be in the area and always a good idea to go see it in person as well. I am huge on urban sketching. I love going out and just taking in the moment, recording the moment, painting from life. So here are a few really great urban sketching resources. If you're someone who's new to urban sketching and is a little nervous to go out in public, try practicing at home first on Google Earth. This is a great resource because it allows you to explore all the areas of the world. You can go right to a place in the comfort of your device. You can set up your screen and practice in your sketchbook. You can use this feature to research places before you go sketch there too, and dropping the little human puts you right in the street view. Once you're ready to go urban sketching, try some places on your own. Local cafes, libraries, or parks are great places to start. Where are your painters is another great resource in case you want to look at events in your area. 
And fun fact, I'll also be hosting my own in-person workshops shortly as well. So stay tuned for the info on that. You can also go to urbansketchers.org. They have plenty of different events there. Another super resource is Artist Network. They have a whole page and blog just about urban sketching. They also have really great art competitions, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the rest of the video. I've also discovered some amazing urban sketching books that I've been loving, and I'll have that in the worksheet that'll include for the resources as well. Now, one of the most important resources is all about color. Color is so important, so fun, but can also be extremely overwhelming when it comes to coming up with a color palette or thinking of which colors to use. So here are some websites that can help you narrow it down. Colormind.io Colormind is a scheme generator that uses deep learning and it can help you learn styles from photographs, movies, and popular art. You can see different color palettes that they generate for you, colors in Adobe Express. This is a bit more of an intricate resource where you can color pick all these different palettes and then you can actually get the numbers. This is really great for any graphic designers and it's just great for color harmony. Believe it or not, Canva actually also has a color palette option. It pretty much does the same and I like to do this whenever I'm doing any of my graphics for my patrons. This allows you to select color schemes that will perfectly match your images. And if you're someone who's developing your brand as a full-time creator, this can be a really great resource to get your colors in so that everything looks cohesive. Now, a really cool one that I absolutely love is this Instagram account. It's called colorpalette.cinema and they actually take screen grabs from movies and find the little color palettes under so you can see the mood and the color palette overall right under the image. Color always depicts a certain mood and color is a whole language that we express as artists. Studying color palettes and gathering them can help you with your color compositions for bigger illustrations. This is a painting of mine titled Dreamer, which by the way on high request is now available on my website again. I also absolutely love my Color Harmony Pantone book. I like to choose color palettes and then match them and swatch them out in my sketchbooks. Studying the master painters in history is also a great way to learn color. Explore and have fun with it because it all comes down to how you feel. Don't be afraid for color to be an expression of that. Social media is one of the fastest ways to reach a large audience and just get your message out, your art out there. For me, this happened with YouTube. I just shared a sketchbook tour and things kind of snowball affected and took off from there. The first place I began posting when I was about 12 or 13 was just my Facebook back in the day. And that actually brought me my first commission which we'll talk about in just a second. And although social media can have some great rewards, it also requires a lot of consistency and patience. Here's a list of some social media platforms you may wanna to consider to begin posting and just slowly getting your art out there if you haven't posted yet. Staying consistent on your platform is really important. Although social media is not a requirement, it's still a valuable resource to have if used in the right way. And I promise this will help you grow your audience, grow your community and your business. So speaking of business, let's talk about some business resources for artists. Let's be real, we all need to make money somehow. And there are many different ways and income streams for artists and creatives. Here's a little list for you to look into. But first and foremost, commissions are a great way. It's one of the ways that I started. I was just taking everything that was coming my way. Everything that I pretty much had time for. This included logos, murals. I went to different restaurants and designed their whole brand for them. Family portraits, pet portraits, wedding portraits, you name it. However, without going too much into detail, let's just say this is one of the most important things when it comes to commissions. Always take a deposit from your client and always have a contract. So here's a great resource for you. It's called the Graphic Artists Guild Handbook Pricing and Ethical Guidelines. I have the 15th edition, but they're always coming out with new ones. So just look at the most recent one. In this book, you'll find contracts for all type of creative work. I actually like reading through it and gaining knowledge on how to structure some of my contracts. I spent a whole period of time gathering the perfect contract whenever I'm working with brands, whenever I'm working with clients now. And commission work was one of the first ways that I learned how to craft my contract. So that's a great resource. And there are plenty of resources online where you can search and just download a sample contract and then just tweak it up how you see best fit for you. Depending on the type of commission I had, I would adjust my contract as needed. 
but also please be sure to run your contracts through a lawyer or professional that knows the language this way you go over all legal questions and everything is answered by a professional but now you may be asking how can you get clients how can you get more work what can you do after you build your audience, maybe you have a small community or maybe you don't have an audience yet. I still recommend having your own website or a platform where you can sell your prints or your artwork and there you can also sell your original work. I also still recommend having a website even if you're not selling anything on there just for your portfolio. This is the fastest way for somebody to come and see and learn more about you. And one of the most asked things that I have is where I outsource from. What are some resources for my prints, my stickers? So let's talk about those. If you want to start selling your artwork in terms of prints and just outsourcing into manufacturers, you can consider actually trying to do it yourself. The best resource that I would recommend to invest in is a really great scanner. Here's the one that I use. It's by Epson. This allows you to scan your sketchbook pages. I scan at a really high resolution, which is why they come out so crispy and beautiful, almost like the original. And at first, after I would scan, I invested in all the different beautiful fine art paper and a really nice printer. I began with an Epson Sure Color printer. I learned so much about the settings. I did this all myself for a good year or two. And then things kind of grew, so I really needed to outsource because it was just taking up so much time to print myself. But I'm actually really glad I started off printing on my own because it actually allowed me to learn a lot about the settings that when I outsourced from manufacturers, I was able to know exactly what to ask them and how to gear and set up my file. Before I begin mentioning some really great manufacturers, here is a pro tip for you. Always call up the manufacturer that you choose or research and ask them for the quality of paper. Ask them what kind of printer do they have. That way you know the quality that you'll be getting. That's if you care about quality, of course. <laughs> What I like to do personally is request samples. This way they can send you some free samples in the mail. You can choose the quality of paper. It's all about that physical experience. And for me, when I send out my Patreon mail every month of hundreds and hundreds of envelopes, I just wanna make sure that everything looks good and feels good when people unpack the envelopes. I don't know, I think it's all part of the happy mail experience. Finding the right paper, the right quality, the right manufacturer, one that has great customer service, is a tedious process, but I promise that once you find it and once you find that one that you really enjoy using, you're gonna be really happy and so will your fans and customers. So first, let's go over stickers. Here are the top three that pop up whenever you search Google. It's Sticker Giant, Sticker Mule, and Sticker App. If you're looking for some postcards or prints, you can go to printkeg.com, thestackhouse.com, vistaprint.com, and Moo are also great as well. I personally love the quality of Gicle prints. They're a bit pricier, but quality is something that I care about and I think that people care about, especially when it comes to longevity of the colors. Gicle prints carry the longest longevity. One of the greatest ways to gain exposure, especially if you have a smaller audience, is to enter contests. In art school, our art teacher actually had us a whole list of art contests that we would enter throughout the year and this would give us exposure as students because there is a student category. If you're between the ages of 15 and 18, Young Arts hosts a visual, literary, and performing arts contest that you should definitely check out. The 10 disciplines covered are classical music, dance, design, film, theater, visual arts, voice, and writing. There are a bunch of cash prizes, so check all that out, and I think it's something that you can definitely benefit from. And this allows you to gain connections, build resilience, and it's fun to enter little competitions here and there. I always recommend entering your best work there, and you'll be surprised on what can come out of it. Another great one is Portrait Society of America. The annual contest has been going on for 25 years and has been open for all artists. The Association of Illustrators is a great place if you're trying to enter some illustration competitions. The World Illustration Awards is one of their competitions that you can enter self-published work, you can enter published work, so if you're a little bit more experienced in the publishing industry, you can enter the work that you created for books into these competitions as well. 
And a quick resource for any children's book artists out there, check out scbwi.org. It's a global community for children's book creators. They have plenty of opportunities to explore. They also have membership benefits. They're constantly doing community contests and they're always awarding grants. And that's super cool because you can let your talent shine through this awesome community. And we've mentioned tons of resources, but what else can you do? What other resources are out there? Let's first talk about magazines and publications. So most magazines actually host competitions, whether it's for cover art. Others also have annual competitions where you can enter the competition and then your art shows up in the magazine. Those are sometimes also rewarded with prize money. Look for magazines that specialize in your media, maybe oil paintings or watercolors. In the resource worksheet below, I put together some blogs that have a list of all these art contests that can be really helpful for you if you want to just click and go to the page. Another great resource is your local library. Libraries constantly have some sort of contests or some sort of events going on that you can enter and get your art out there. Libraries are alone a great resource to even just grab some books and use that as inspiration for your artwork as well. So technically it's like a two-in-one resource. <laughs> your local community there are local general museums there are local galleries and local little workshops and events that are hosting different things that you can look at so it's important not to limit your searches and actually just expand your searches think of other ways that you can enter think of different places that you can go these are all great places to start and thousands of them exist for all those of you who want everything in one big worksheet with all the exact links and descriptions, I've put together this ultimate guide worksheet for you guys so you can head over to the link in my description and my Patreon for you guys to grab that. This list is going to grow as we go on and I highly recommend you put in the comments below anything that I have missed, any resources that have helped you and in hopes will help this big community that we're growing together. Comment below so we have this big, lovely, juicy database of info going so we can all learn together. A huge shout out to my patrons for supporting me and just making certain things possible. Thank you guys so much. But overall, the most important piece of advice that I have for you is just to find what works for you. See what you jive with. See what casts a little more creativity and curiosity than before. And then follow that feeling and keep going. Also, if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe so you can join the art squad here. And if you want even more resources, be sure to check out this video right on the screen for my favorite art books. I'm sending you a big hug wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.